Some of the most popular questions that come my way lately are, is it okay to type our child? At what age can we type them? And if we can type them, can you help me type them? And so the answer is yes and no. And in today's video, I'm gonna break all of that down and more. By the end of this video, you will definitely walk away with some new tools and learning more about your child and learning about their style and stuff like that. But I am gonna answer all of those questions today. And if you're new here, I'm Hillary, your certified Enneagram life coach, and I love to teach the Enneagram to you guys in the simplest and easiest way possible. And before we get started, don't forget to push that subscribe button if you haven't already, because new videos go live every single week. And then if you don't mind, go ahead and push that thumbs up button to let me know that you liked this video. The first thing we're gonna start with is don't type your children because ultimately they're gonna be the only ones to truly know the why behind why they do things and what they do. And so it's really important for you to understand that you don't want to type them. However, we can use the Enneagram to help you know how to love them even better for more grace and understanding, to help provide safe spaces for them. The thing we wanna stay away from is saying things like, well, you're always challenging, so you must be a type A the challenger, or you're so quiet and shy, you don't like conflict, so you must be a nine, the peacemaker. And that kind of language will ultimately put your child in a box and the Enneagram wants to take us out of the box. And so that's why I say, don't type your children but we definitely are gonna use the Enneagram today to help us understand them better and to kind of like be able to narrow it down to a couple of um, different types that you'll hold loosely as they grow older. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is read out of this book. It's called The Enneagram of Parenting. I don't know if you can see that. Sometimes the camera doesn't pick it up, but it's called The Enneagram and Parenting. There's one um, part on page two that I really love. I just love how the author words this. She says the Enneagram also can be applied to children, right? So that's a different thing between typing child and being applied to children. If it is used very carefully by helping parents learn how to nurture a sensitive artistic type differently from a rough and tumble conquer the world type, right? And so there are big differences between those two types of children. And so 100% the Enneagram is gonna help you be able to nurture them better. It also goes on to say the Enneagram acknowledges that each of, each of us is unique, yet it identifies certain distinctive patterns of behavior. And by learning to perceive others more accurately, we will see doors open to greater compassion and acceptance. We will learn to understand children better by using the Enneagram. And so yes, we are definitely gonna use it, but I just wanna reiterate, we're not gonna type them and put them in that box. And so just stay with me. Don't worry. I am going to give you a bunch of things to be looking out for um, in all nine types in your children. So that is coming. The next question I want to go over is at what age can a child actually know their type? Like I said earlier, um, you're going to be able to point out distinctive patterns and behaviors in your child. And you're probably gonna be able to take away like five or six of the types where you're like, yeah, they're probably not a type one or a type three or, or whatever that looks like. That's normal. But I do love the thought of just saying, okay, you could be a couple of these types and I'm just gonna watch and see and, and see how you grow and process things and, and really observe what drives the child. And so that's what I want you to do to, to really observe them as they're growing up. And so for me personally, you guys know I have two kids. I have now they're 18 and 20 and I introduced the Enneagram to them probably late junior high, early high school. And yeah, I was always watching and learning. Um, but for them personally, I didn't really introduce it to them until later on because I felt at that age like, okay, I think it might be helpful for them now and then also for my parenting to figure this out. And so both my children, I had them take that um, 144 question test. I think we call it the ready test. They, I had them go ahead and take that so that we can kind of go, okay, what are their top three types that kind of come up? And for my type five, the top three that came up for him were the type one, the type eight, and then the type five. And that's the order they came in. And so you obviously recognize right away that 
his top two wasn't even his type. And so as we begin to research and learn and uncover really what drove him, it, really, it ended up being the type five. But I want to say one more thing on, on his type. Early on, I would say elementary years, he did not look like a type five. And so that's another thing to consider. He, to me, looked like a seven. And yes, the five and the seven are connected by a line. So this makes sense, right? But he had a lot of energy. He was always going, going, and going, and more adventurous and, and just didn't fit that stereotypical type five. He, you know, didn't actually fit within the type five right away, but he 100% is a type five. And so that's another thing that can come into play when you're trying to uncover um, your children's type with them. And so keep that in mind that you might be actually seeing something they're connected to first. But that didn't happen with my type three. He, early on, I would say his whole life, he absolutely seemed to be more motivated and driven by what the type three is driven and motivated by. So those are just two examples I wanted to give you. And that's why it's, I say, don't type them because you will put them in a box and, and just to watch them and kind of watch, you know, how they evolve and, and how they grow and stuff. And so ultimately I would say, don't try and type your kids, but help them uncover their true type. Okay, so moving on to where to start. And my advice to you is to start with yourself. You have to learn about yourself. You have to understand what's motivating you. You have to learn about the Enneagram and then start observing your children. Start watching them. Start, you know, trying to uncover like, hmm, they did this, this, and this. Could you tell what was motivating them? Could you see the why behind it? Sometimes you will be able to definitely recognize their why. Another thing you could be looking for is when they make decisions or how they talk or what speech they use, do you feel like they're using their head? Are they thinking first? Their heart, are they, are they feeling first? Or their gut, are they like, hmm, making decisions based off of a gut instinct. So that's some things you could be looking for and observing. And then the other thing is be looking at the stances. What are those stances? There is a withdrawn stance, types four, five, and nine. There's an assertive stance. Those are the types three, seven, and eight. And then there is a compliant stance, which is the one, two, and six. And so you kind of can start observing their stance and observing what do they do when they're overwhelmed. I do have a video on stances that definitely can help you on this, and I'll link that right here. But yes, look at the stances. Start to observe those in your child. So just be looking for, you know, how are, how are they talking? What are their emotions like? And different things like that to help you uncover um, what their true type is. Okay, so moving on to the last part, which I know that you're like, okay, this is why I wanted to watch the video, is styles and tips and behaviors to be looking for in all nine types. And so that you can start to um, notice, you know, what your child is doing. And so let's start with the type one, the perfectionist, the, that perfectionistic style. And some things you can be looking out for are, do they try and be the good boy or the good girl by doing everything right? Is that really important to them to be good? Um, do they get anxious when school projects aren't perfect? Does, do they really start to lose it? You know, if they're like, ah, it's not perfect. I wanted everything to be perfect. Maybe they do chores without ever having to be asked. Is that something that you notice in your child? Sometimes the type one could act as a child, act more like an adult. They also can get frustrated if their siblings or their peers or their friends or anyone doesn't try as hard as they try. And the last thing I'd say to look for is, do they have a know-it-all attitude? Do they always think they are right? Are they like, mm-hmm? Do they correct other people? And so those are just some behaviors to start looking for as you are observing your child and helping them land on their true type as they get older. Moving on to the type two, the helper, the helper style. If you know the Enneagram, you know the two wants to be loved, wants to be wanted, wants to be well liked. Other things to be looking for is do they get their feelings hurt easily? Do they struggle to say no? Do they want to be really good at school and really want to be liked by their teacher? Is that really important to them? Do they like doing things for other people? And the last thing I would say is watch for how much they want to be with other people and their friends. Are they just like, I just want to be with my friends all the time. I would say those are some things that you can look for in that type two helper style. Moving on to the type three, that achiever type, that achiever style. Some things to be looking for in that one is they are driven by success and they want to be admired and be looking out for, are they highly competitive? 
Do they need to be the best at everything? How do they handle failure? Uh, the three can be very afraid of failure. And a lot of times, and I saw this in my son as he was getting older, there are things he wouldn't even attempt. If he thought he would fail and not be just super successful, he wouldn't even attempt it. He would say, nope, I'm not doing it. And so there were lots of times where I was like, wait, you have to practice. You have to try, you know. And for him, it was just a solid no. Another thing to be looking for in that type three is, are they always the teacher's pet? I, I do see a lot of threes um, being that teacher's pet. Do they pay close attention to what's popular and want to dress to make a good impression? The three's going to care a lot about grades and awards and different things like that. They also can tend to be very charming, have great manners, and the last thing I can think of is they like to set goals. So those are just some things to be looking out for in the type three. Moving on to the type four, that romantic, individualist, that style. Some of the things I would be looking for are, do they want to be unique? Do they need to feel special? Do they focus on their feelings? Feelings are very important to the four. And so um, is your child just really into their feelings? One thing that I love about the four is they tend to find special meaning in a lot of things that other people don't. The four can get their feelings hurt um, easily. And especially if they are trying to express their feelings and emotions and it kind of gets shut down or just not hurt at all, they can get their feelings hurt. They are authentic and emotionally honest and very prone to daydreaming. And so that's a big one for the four. And the last thing I could think of is they love creative things. And so they either are creative or they just love creative um, outlets and things like that. The type five style, the observer, they want to understand everything. They're very curious. They're always asking why. I can definitely say my son did always ask why. So that was definitely prevalent in his, in his upbringing. They desire to know how everything works. They could be the ones that take everything apart. Do you have a child that does this? They take apart their toys, their electronics, everything like that. And I will say, even though um, my type five son definitely, um, definitely had more of the type seven behaviors of what I was saying earlier. The, this part was 100% him his whole life. He took apart everything. One time I got home and he took apart my blow dryer. He just wanted to see how it worked. And so I was like, okay. And, and that's where we develop the compassion, right? Instead of me getting upset and being like, oh my gosh, you just ruined my blow dryer. It was like, I totally know that he needs to know the why behind why everything is and how everything works. The fives might be a little bit more shy and introverted and that definitely progressed as my son got older. I think as he got into fourth grade, I started to see that behavior. They love to be alone. They can get lost in learning and reading and doing different things like that. They can just totally put all of their energy into maybe being on the computer or, or anything like that. And the last thing is they're usually guarded about their own feelings. And so those are some things to be looking for in the type five. So let's move on to the type six, the loyalist style. This type is going to worry a little more about safety and stuff than other kids might. They want to be safe. They want to be secure. They want to be supported. They spend a lot of time planning. They're pretty loyal, especially loyal to their friends. Now, this one likes to argue the opposite side. So, you know, I know as adults, we're like, oh, the type six, they'll poke holes in people's plans and stuff just so that they can make sure that all worst case scenarios are thought out. And that's kind of what it looks like in, in the kid. And the last thing I would say is this style or this type often has trouble making up their minds. And so those are some things to be looking out with that type six style. Moving on to the type seven style, the enthusiast. They are usually jumping from one activity to the next. Sitting still can be hard for them. They will most likely wake up happy every day, be happy when they're going to bed, be optimistic most of the time. This type might get bored really easily, maybe like with chores and routines and different things like that. That might just like bore them to death. They are probably going to resist discipline more than other kids. And the last thing is, is they will probably have lots of friends. So those are some things to be looking out for. Okay, we're almost done. Moving on to the type eight style, the challenger. They usually are pretty assertive. They want to be self-reliant. They want to be independent and usually are pretty strong willed. This type enjoys excitement and challenges. They take charge quickly. They hate being controlled and they are actually going to be the one that stands up for maybe there's a kid getting picked on or a kid that, you know, um, just is more shy or whatever. If they see that, man, they're going to be the kids that are like, 
oh heck no, not on my watch. And they're just gonna get involved and take care of the situation, right or wrong, right? But they are gonna fight for the underdog and fight for the kid that can't fight for himself. And then I would say they're pretty honest and they have tender hearts, but you might not see that all the time, but they're in their tender hearts can be more towards babies. And like I said, the underdog, babies, animals, um, that kind of stuff usually is where you see their tenderness from. All right, so we're on the last one, the type nine style, the peacemaker. This one is gonna wanna keep the peace all the time and probably, you know, try to avoid conflict at all costs, even to where they might like, there might be conflict going around and they just quietly leave the room. <laughs> That's what you're gonna see in this one. They like to go along to get along. They will tend to put off everything until the last minute. So they're a little bit more of a procrastinator. They like to read, they like to watch TV, different things like that. They can get distracted easily. And the last thing is, which is interesting, is they actually are very stubborn. The nine can be very stubborn. If they put their mind to something, they won't budge. And I actually can attest to that. I don't have a lot of opinions, but the ones that I do have, I won't budge on. So. That's the type nine style. So what'd you guys think? Did this help you? Do you think this is gonna help your parenting? I hope it does or help you understand children. Maybe you're not the parent, but there is children in your life or kids in your life or whatever. Does this give you a different view of them? Does this give you tools to help them better? I That's what I did this for. I don't want it to be like, oh, well, my kid hit all of those and so they must be that. Like I said at the beginning, we're not gonna throw a type on them, but we are gonna help them you know, very gently uncover their type as they're getting older. And so that's my advice. You can start to, it's just to be looking out for these behaviors. What are you seeing, right? And if you do have, say for instance, a type four and they're really emotional, this should give you so much more compassion for them. It's not, they're not trying to be like the most emotional in the family, but that's how they're wired. That's how they're made. And so my purpose is just to give you more tools in this, to parent better. So I hope that's what I did today. Equipped you guys better. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That means the world to me guys. And say hi in the comment section. You guys know I love to talk to you. But that's all I have for today. Until next time, bye guys.